In this video, we're going to take a look at question number one from the 2017 AP Statistics exam. So let's first take a look at the question. Researchers studying a pack of gray wolves in North America collected data on the length x in meters from the nose to tip of tail and the weight y in kilograms of the wolves. A scatter plot of weight versus length revealed a relationship between the two variables described as positive, linear, and strong. For the situation described above, explain what is meant by each of the following words. Positive, linear, and strong. The data collected from the wolves were used to create the least squares equation y hat equals negative 16.46 plus 35.02x. Part B, interpret the meaning of the slope of the least squares regression line in context. Part C, one wolf in the pack with a length of 1.4 meters had a residual of negative 9.67 kilograms. What was the weight of the wolf? So I'm gonna take you first through a model solution and then after we look at the model solution, we'll take a look at the rubric and what was required in order to get full credit. So for our model solution, in part A, we had to give uh, good descriptions for three different big ideas here. So for positive, uh, we've stated here that wolves with higher links tend to weigh more. And you'll also notice that I've taken care of the context right there in the first part. As, uh, for linear, uh, we just said that the points on the scatter plot uh, tend to follow a straight line. And as far as strength is concerned, uh, they said that it was strong, which means that those data points were close to the line. Now for part B, a very common AP type question uh, asks you to interpret the slope in the context of the problem. And so we have for every increase of one meter in wolf length, we predict an increase of 35.02 kilograms in the weight. Now the last part of this question, part C, they asked us to calculate the actual weight of a particular wolf and they gave us the residual. And so you have to remember the relationship between uh, actual and predicted, uh, and you gotta remember the correct order here. Actual minus predicted is what gives you your residual. Now in this problem, we were given the residual uh, and asked to find the actual. So the other piece of information that we need is the predicted weight of this particular wolf. So I've shown the work here where we took the equation for the line of best fit and we've plugged in the length of the wolf at 1.4, which has allowed us to make a prediction for what that wolf should weigh. So we go back here and we plug that in for the predicted value, which allows us to then solve for the actual weight of the wolf. And we see here that the actual weight of the wolf is 22.9 kilograms. Now that takes us through the model solution, but let's take a look now at the rubric to see what would be required for full credit on this one. Now the way that this one is graded is there are three different parts. And in each of the three parts, you're going to give yourself a grade of E for essentially correct, P for partially correct, or I for incorrect. The first part is all of part A. And the way that they've defined it for full credit in order to get essentially correct, you have to have acceptable definitions for all three, and then you also have to have context. Well, context is easy. We established that right away here when we said wolves and lengths and weight. So we know we've taken care of the context. Now, as far as acceptable definitions, I'm gonna run through a list of acceptable definitions and unacceptable definitions for each of the three ideas. When describing the positive part of this question, here are some acceptable responses. As length increases, so does weight. Longer wolves weigh more. The points on the graph go up as you move from left to right. Now here are some that are not acceptable for describing positive. As the length goes up, weight changes. No direction there. Both length and weight get bigger. Once again, no relationship described. And the correlation is greater than zero. Okay, the positive relationship part of that is not explained. Now let's take a look at acceptable and unacceptable responses for linear. First, let's start with acceptable responses. The relationship between length and weight follows a straight line. The pattern of points in the scatter plot is relatively straight. Length and weight have a constant slope. And here are some that are not acceptable for describing linear. The points all line up because they could line up all along a curve. There is a positive correlation. The scatter plot is a line. It's not the scatter plot that is a line, it's the points within the scatter plot that form a line. Now let's take a look at acceptable and unacceptable responses for strength. Here are the acceptable responses. Indicating the data points are close to a line. 
indicating that residuals are small. Correlation is close to one. Notice there, the number one has to be there. There has to be a number. Now here are some that are not acceptable. You can draw a straight line through the points. All points are close together. And there is a high positive correlation. Notice there, there's no reference to the value of one. So hopefully now you can decide whether you have acceptable definitions for all three. If you do, with the context, give yourself an essentially correct. If you only had acceptable definitions for two of them, with the context, you get a partially correct. Or if you had all three acceptable definitions, but you forgot your context. Anything less than this would be I for incorrect. Now let's take a look at part B. There are three components that are necessary for full credit here. First, you have to correctly identify the slope of the line as 35.02. Secondly, in your interpretation, you have to say that an increase of a specified amount of weight for each unit increase of length. And for us, we've specified an increase of 35.02 kilograms for every one meter increase in the length. And then the third thing is you have to have used uh, the word predicted or the words on average. So for us, we put that right here. Okay, we call that non-deterministic language. So it, one important idea here is if you missed component one, you can still get credit for components two and three, even if you're using the incorrect value that you used for part one. So if you got all three of those components, give yourself E for essentially correct. If you got two of those three components, you get partially correct, and then anything less than that would be an I for incorrect. And finally, part C, let's take a look at. And for this one, there are two components that are necessary in order to get full credit. First, you have to have calculated your predicted value as 32.57, which is what we have here. And then secondly, you have to calculate the correct actual value of 22.9, with work, so clearly showing that you're using the residual and the predicted value in order to arrive at the actual value here. Now, it is possible for you to get credit for part two, even if part one is incorrect. If you use an incorrect answer and you show your work here, you can still get credit for the actual, even if your answer is incorrect. Now, in order to get full credit on that part, you have to have both components, one and two. If you only have one of those components, give yourself a P, partial credit. So now that you've looked at all three parts and you have either E, P, or I for each one of those three parts, here's how you turn it into a score on the AP exam out of four points. For a four, you have to have all three parts essentially correct. For a three, you have to have two parts essentially correct and one part partially correct. For a two, you have two parts essentially correct and no parts partially correct, or one part essentially correct and one or two parts partially correct, or partial credit on all three. And for a one, you have one part essentially correct, or you have no parts essentially correct and two parts partially correct. Anything less than that would be scored as a zero.